right, what's going on, you guys? Nick here with Nick's Strength and Power. I've got a couple of interesting stories for you guys today. The first story that I've got for you guys today, let's talk about day one of the 2023 Texas Pro, where you had 212 bodybuilding and classic physique. I want to talk about classic physique first, because this was a pretty big upset, I think. I don't think a lot of people were expecting this result, and all three of these top three guys looked, I think, phenomenal. So in first place, you had Jay Hoon. And that was the big upset of the night because also in this lineup, you had Robert Timms and Logan Franklin both trying to get to the Olympia. And I don't think either one of them really looked off here. From what I saw, Logan was in pretty good shape. Robert Timms, it's the same thing that he always runs into. His legs are a little bit undersized, and I think that's what really let him down. Uh, but the fact that he his conditioning was insane. Robert Timms looked amazing. You can see these pictures here. I mean, this guy has some of the best bicep peaks I think that I've ever seen. Really good midsection, really good abs. Conditioning was on point, but I think it was just the lower body at the end of the day. Uh, but he looks so good, it still gave him the edge over Logan Franklin, who I think has a little bit better balanced physique. He's got better wheels than Robert. Um, I think his conditioning was slightly behind Robert Timms. But overall, really interesting result here. Jay Hoon looked incredible, the winner of the show. And it looks like Robert Timms and Logan Franklin both are going to have to continue to compete to try to qualify if they want to get to that Olympia stage this year. But that was your classic physique result for the 2023 Texas Pro. Now, next up in the news, let's talk about 212 here. This is... One of the most exciting 212 shows I've seen in a long time. This Texas Pro is really turning out to uh, really deliver on everything that we expected. And we haven't even seen men's open bodybuilding yet. That's not until tomorrow. But 212 and Classic Physique, I thought were both highly competitive. Classic Physique had like almost 30 guys, I think, in that lineup. And 212 had a really good lineup as well. Now, Keon Pearson taking the victory here. I think this was well-deserved. Of course, you had Noel Adame in second place. And I want to say, I, before I talk about Keon, I want to say I thought Noel looked really, really good here. Um, he's a really muscular dude, really thick, really dense. And I think at the end of the day, the difference between Keon and Noel was more shape than anything. Especially if you look at some of those front shots between Keon and Noel. You look at the width in the taper that Keon has how small his waist is, then it goes up to these wide flaring lats. While Noel is a really big muscular dude, he didn't have that same taper effect that Keon had. And the same thing could be said when they turn around from the back. Keon just has this crazy taper that Noel just doesn't have. So when I say shape, I think that was the biggest difference between the two. Because honestly, you could make the argument that Noel is, is bigger than Keon. He might be more muscular. But this is where somebody with a shape like Keon, that's where that shape really comes into play. Now, that being said, I think this is by far the best version of Keon I think we've ever seen. Like I said in the pre-judging video, I feel like Keon was bigger here, fuller here, more filled out for the 212 division. In the past, I think he was a little bit, he still had a little bit of room to grow. I think he's really coming into his own in this division. And while he was able to, I think, put on some size between the Olympia and this show, his conditioning was also better. Like I said, those deep separated cuts in the legs that you don't typically see as being as strong of a point for Keon, but his quads were diced. I think it was the most separated I've ever seen his hamstrings. He almost has striated glutes, which I don't know if we've seen from Keon yet, like really defined striated glutes. So I think this is the best Keon we've ever seen. I think at the Olympia, he's going to be a factor. I think he's going to do better than he did last year. He was sixth, first call out at the last Olympia. I really think that Keon will be no less than top three at this year's 212 Mr. Olympia. And while I think Keon was on point here, I still think there's going to be a little bit of room to make up on conditioning when he's going up against a guy like Sean Clarita because Sean Clarita is one of the most dangerous conditioned guys there is. So if Keon just improves that conditioning slightly and brings a package similar to this with the same fullness, with the same roundness, without sacrificing that size, I think Keon can be a serious contender for the title this year. Now, also, I want to say I do see all the comments talking about Keon's midsection. He has this separation in the middle of his abs. And I will say I noticed it, too. So I hear you guys. I see it. But this is something that Keon has always had. He's always had this separation in the center of his abs his entire career. I just think now here that he's bigger, it might look more evident. Uh, but I, it's nothing new. He's always had this genetic split in his abs. I just think it looked a little bit more obvious here. But I don't think it's because his waist is getting bigger. If you if you look at him hit those shots, like the front double bicep, his waist doesn't look like it's increased one inch. It still looks crazy small. So I think it just could be that we're seeing 
a bigger version of Keon, and maybe he was more well fed for this show um, to bring this rounder, fuller look. And maybe that made the split look a little bit more obvious, but I, I really didn't see it as a problem for him here because in the poses, like I said, the front double bicep, for example, his waist is tapered and controlled, and I don't think the midsection looks bad in the actual poses. But I do hear you guys. I see what you're saying, and I guess that might be a question for Keon to answer if he thinks it's something um, that has gotten worse or if it's just something he's always had because I've always noticed that. But I, I will agree with you guys. It was noticeable here. I agree. But even with that, I still think this was the best version of Keon we've ever seen, and I think he's, I just can't wait to see this guy at the Olympia. Now, next up in the news, we got a rare physique update from Hadi Chupin, which to me looks like it is probably recent. Right now, we're 11 weeks out from the 2023 Mr. Olympia. Hadi showing off his obliques, his serratus, his abs, the conditioning that he's already in at 11 weeks out. We know that Hadi is the king of consistency and conditioning, so this is really no surprise here. And I'm not sure that we've seen anybody else that's currently qualified for the Olympia at 11 weeks out other than guys that have competed really recently um, have this same level of detail in their midsection yet. The Nick Walkers, the Derek Lunsfords, the Samson Dowdas, the guys that are going to be in that conversation with Hadi, um, I think that Hadi is ahead. And I'm not surprised because I expect him to probably have the best conditioning on stage that day. But anyway, I can't say I'm super surprised to see Hadi in shape, to see him with this kind of detail. Um, but it is the rare treat that we get a physique update from him, so I wanted to talk about it in today's video. Now, next up in the news, we've got a physique update from Brett Wilkin at 11 weeks out from the Olympia. And this would be what I would consider to be probably the best physique update that I've seen from Brett, the most impressive at least. To me, he looks significantly bigger than the last time that we saw him on stage. And it looks like he took this time off and utilized it well as far as putting on some quality off-season size. Because to me, he looks crazy big here. I mean, if you put this physique update side by side with another mass monster, Nick Walker, another freak in his own right, I think they look pretty comparable. Both at 11 weeks out, both in really good lighting, both white guys with really round, full upper bodies. I think it's an interesting comparison, and I think it's a favorable one for Brett, which is saying a lot considering that Nick Walker was top three at the Olympia. So I'm pretty impressed with Brett, and I'm kind of expecting him to be a little bit of a wild card at the Olympia this year, somebody that people might not expecting to be in that conversation in the top 10 that has a very good possibility of breaking into that mix. I think this is, uh, is going to be a really exciting Olympia. And I feel like we've been saying that every year for the past couple years, but it seems like these Olympia lineups recently have been getting a lot of new names, a lot of new talent, a lot of young blood in this in the, in the top ranks. And I feel like those top placings have been changing quite a bit. Now, the final story that I have for you guys today, we got a pretty brief, kind of obscure physique update from good Vito, Vitaly Ugonikov, who we're going to be seeing compete at the European Championships in just four weeks' time. We're getting very close. We're three weeks away from seeing the Italy show, and now we're only four weeks away from the European Championships. And we get a front double bicep from him here, even though it's in black and white. And it's a very short clip. It looks like he's doing a photo shoot. But I do think this is recent. I think this is from four weeks out, just based on some of the other updates he's posted. This looks like he's in about the same shape as other recent front double bicep pictures. But I feel like, as with that guest posing that we saw from him in Brazil, I, I still think he looks more impressive in pictures then he looks in motion, in video. That's I feel like he doesn't post very often posing videos. It's always still pictures, because I think he looks better in the pictures. But let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And as always, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the men's open bodybuilding portion of the Texas Pro. I love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Nick Strength and Power signing out. All right, guys, don't forget to click that like button and subscribe to this channel if you enjoy the content. Also, check out my Instagram at Nick Strength Power, my Facebook page, which is simply Nick Strength and Power, my secondary YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Vlogs, for vlogs and bonus content that you will not see on this channel. And consider subscribing to my third YouTube channel, Nick Strength and Pokemon, which is all things Pokemon and trading card games completely unrelated to this channel. So if you're into that, Give that one a look, and all links to merchandise and social media will be in the description box below. If you guys want a Nick Strength and Power t-shirt, that will be in the Shopify link below. Have a great day.